Hello friends, in this video let us solve MCQs on network analysis. In this video we are going to cover 5 questions. Starting with first question, the maximum power that a 12 volt DC source with an internal resistance of 2 ohm to a resistive load is dash. So let me consider, I will be having a practical voltage source valued 12 volts comma 2 ohms. So this is connected to a resistive load. So what is the value of resistance and the maximum power they are asking? The value of resistance RL should be equals to the same resistance of that of source resistance that should be equals to 2 ohms. So if I want to calculate the value of power, power is given by V square divided by R or I square times of R. One more expression is V times of I. So let me calculate what is the value of this voltage that is VL. So VL is given by what is the total voltage that is 12. Let me apply voltage divider rule multiplied by the resistance of the same branch that is 2 divided by total resistance is 2 plus 2 that is 4. So I will be getting 6. I will be getting 6 volts. So I got VL equal to 6 volts. So what is one more expression? What is the expression for power? V equals to 6 square divided by 2 which is equals to 18 watts which is equals to 18 watts. So the suitable answer for this is option number B. What is one more method in order to calculate? So let me find the value of the current. Let me call the current as IL. So what is the value of current IL? IL equals to voltage divided by what is the resistance that is 4. 12 divided by 4 which is equals to 3 amperes. So let me substitute over here 3 square multiplied by 2. 3 3's are 9, 9 2's are 18. I got the same answer. V times of I, what is the value of V? 6. What is the value of current? That is 3. So I got the same answer. Able to follow? Let me solve the second question. What they have given is, what is the equivalent resistance of this circuit? So in order to solve this, what I am going to do is, I am having two delta networks. So one delta network, I am going to convert into a star network. So let me convert this delta network to a star network. So what I will be getting is, I will be having a 1 ohm resistor and I will be having a 4 ohm resistor. So what is the value of this 3 resistor is my question. So let me call this one as R1, R2 and R3. How I can find R1? R1 equals to 2 multiplied by 3. 2 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 plus 3 plus 5 which is equals to 10. So I will be getting 6 divided by 10 which is equals to 0.6. So this resistance is 6 divided by 10 or 0.6 ohms right what is the value of r2 r2 is given by 3 multiplied by 5 that is 3 multiplied by 5 divided by 3 plus 5 plus 2 which is 10 so i'll be getting 1.5 ohms so i'll be getting r2 equals to 1.5 ohms now what is the value of r3 r3 is given by 5 twos are 10 divided by 3 plus 2 plus 5 which is 10 so i'll be getting 1 ohm so I'll be getting R3 equals to 1 ohm. This 1 ohm and 0.6 is connected in series. So I'll be getting an equivalent circuit of 1.6 ohms. I'll be having two more resistors that is connected in series that is 5.5. In series to this, you'll be having a 1 ohm resistor. You'll be having a 1 ohm resistor. These two resistors are connected in parallel. What is the equivalent resistance? That is 5.5 multiplied by 1.6 divided by 5.5 plus 1.6 that is 7.1 that is 7.1 roughly if I am calculating because almost all the options are far apart so roughly if I am calculating so I will be getting 16 ones are 16 16 fours are 64 remaining terms are 7 so 7 is 16 fours are 64 0.4 so it is 11 5s are 55, 11 4s are 44, so 5 by 4. So this value is 5 by 4 which is 1.25. In series to that you will be having one more resistor that is this resistance that is 1 ohm. So 1.25 plus 1 which is equals to 2.25 ohms. Given any circuit which transformation need to be applied? Source transformation or star to delta network or delta to star network nodal analysis, mess analysis, Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, you should have an idea. So when you will be getting that idea, when you will be solving more and more problems. Stay tuned to my channel in order to solve more and more problems. So let us solve third question, Kirchhoff's current law is valid for, Kirchhoff's current law is valid for DC circuits, yes, 
AC circuits, yes. Both DC and AC circuits, yes. Sinusoidal circuits, no. So, Kirchhoff's current law is applicable only for DC circuits they are given. This only term they are given. So, option number A is wrong. Option number B is also wrong because they have given only. So, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law is applicable for both DC and AC circuits. In the case of DC, you will be having only magnitude. But in the case of AC, you will be having phasors also. When I will be talking about steady state response, I will be talking about phasors. So, option number C is correct. The number of independent loops for a network is given by the number of loop equations how much you can write is b minus of n plus 1 where b is branches and n is number of nodes so plus 1 you are going to write so this many loop equations you have to write hence the option is option number b is correct fifth question what they have given is the capacitor charging current is first option what they have given is exponential growth exponential growth can be like this or the exponential growth can even be like this also exponential decay they have given exponential decay can be like this also or like this also this is the response of a low pass filter linear decay it is like this linear rise it should be like this nothing but in the case of linear decay and linear rise you will be having a fixed slope we know that the capacitor charging current curve will be like this the charging curve will be like this but the discharging curve will be like this hence the suitable option is option number a is correct comment your score in the comment section like this video share this video with your friends also subscribe to my channel craving can all the best for your exams thank you